Welcome to the Major Music Lounge. I'm your host, D. Doc, coming at y'all with another episode for this week. Big thanks to everybody if you're tuning in on YouTube to the video stream. Definitely appreciate it. And the podcast will also be available on all podcast streaming platforms. So, you know, your Apple Podcasts, your Spotify Podcasts, iHeartRadio, etc. Look for it on there. We're very close to wrapping up season one of the Major Music Lounge. And I do want to thank, like, all the producers, the artists, the influencers that have been on the show. The show that you're watching right now is going to be show number 19. After this, is going to be one more show. And then going to be taking a bit of a hiatus to work on some other things for the summer, including a new project. The last project that I did was actually a joint project this year with the artist uh, with M.A., which we released Raptivist in February. And then right before that, I actually did the Quarantine Files, which I released uh, in November of last year. And this year I said I was going to probably do anywhere from two to four, like, uh, full length albums and then i was going to probably do some beat tapes here and there in between uh but if you've you know we're pretty much at about the halfway mark of 2021 if you've supported any of what i was just mentioning definitely want to thank you for that if you're new to this channel watching this on youtube I like to talk all things music production so whether that's music marketing pro audio or audio engineering I like to talk about it also, like new gear, new software, um, new plugins, anything along those lines, I like to dig deep into and have some conversation about that here on this channel. And that interests you along with this podcast. Now, the Major Music Lounge is centered around um, not only those things, but also like to do music producer interviews just to kind of get some perspective. I uh, mean, had people that are influencers here on youtube recently had mr fat who produced the cupid shuffle from my hometown of lafayette louisiana and uh that was a very good interview also beat maker of the squad which is a big youtube influencer as well as um i kind of came across him as i was learning how to make beats on ipad and then uh misled you know, she was on a show, a part of the What's on Your iPad podcast, along with Beatmaker is the squad. So um, had a lot of like really good people that provided some great insight and some great interviews. And if you're into things like that, definitely go ahead, hit the subscribe button. And as I said, I will be back doing more and more interviews. What I'm probably going to look to do over the summer is do more in-person interviews locally um i live in dallas but i got you know no producers here all the way back to my hometown in lafayette louisiana so i may go on somewhat of a little uh a little tour i guess you can say and just interview some people here and there because i got some great ideas of what i want to bring to the show in season two so definitely look out for that all right so let's get into talking a little bit about talented people now you can be talented in the world you can be able to out rap somebody but if you're not applying that and you are not being consistent as far as the music that you're releasing in this day and age 2021 there is no reason anybody that does music for one should not have a in-home setup. I mean, you can get a... You don't necessarily have to get a Mac. Mac is just my choice. You get a PC with what Pro Tools or... Um, I think there's also Cubase on the PC that you can use. Not only there, but also on the Mac. And then speaking of Cubase, you can even go with like an iPad and use Cubases to do recording beat making and you know any type of mixing and mastering you want to do as well in 2021 the ipad has become a great a great tool for not only artists but also producers to create music with that being said a lot of the other avenues as far as being able to release music have become a lot easier i mean whether you're going through like a distro kid whether you're going through a TuneCore, BeatStars, any other platform, um, 
there's several different ways in 2021 to be able to release music that there wasn't years ago. So I say that to say, yes, you can be talented in a lot of different ways, but how is that talent working for you? And you may sometimes hear the saying of, if you do something for 10,000 hours, then you're going to fully master that whatever or you you may you may reach your goal if you put in 10,000 hours something along those lines and I say that to say the person who they might not be as talented they might have some talent but um where they outshine you is the fact that that person might study music marketing that person may study how to reach an audience online, how to interact with their community, how to build a YouTube, how to build an Instagram, how to sell their beats, um, how to promote their album. That person uh, may also consistently put out music. And the one thing that as a creator that we got to kind of get off of is when is music truly ready? You know, if some of you guys have never heard of the story about the song, uh, the story about Michael Jackson Thriller and how many times that record was mixed. And I say that to say that, you know, I hear sometimes a lot of people may not think their music is great quality. And, you know, there's a fine line between having something that's properly mixed and being able to put it out versus um just putting it out i've been there on both sides of the spectrum i remember i think well it was a major moves it was a studio and stages anyhow i had no it might have been actually yeah i think it was um actually my first so let's go back to like my first couple of albums i'm talking like major moves one and two and then um studios and stages was another one well a lot of those tracks were not mixed as good as they should have been but i put those out only because a lot of the circumstances that were going on at that point in time um i just had to put those out and i just i lived with it now some people may pull it up in 2021 those releases happened what around 2010 2011 maybe a little bit after uh 2014 as well and if you listen to all of those albums and in conjunction with what i have recently i would say starting with major moves three which came out in 2017 to all the records that i put out since then they're gonna sound night and day better so for someone who might actually know a lot about audio engineering and production. It probably didn't sound good to their ear. But then on the flip side of it, I can see how it helped me build a base going forward for years to come. And a lot of people sometimes may tell me that they see the progress in my music. Now, you may have somebody else on the flip side of that that they didn't release music. Music is just sitting on their computers. I've sold beats to artists that who are very talented. That I have their albums sitting on the computer that's behind me right now. You know, that's a situation where, again, talented people, but they don't take the time to necessarily know where to put this music or how to release this music. And there's been situations where I've, and I'm not going to say any names or anything like that, but I've offered to kind of show individuals how to release their music and do things along those lines. And instead, you got a lot of guys that are more content with, they may record something every six months, put it up on SoundCloud, and they're not making any streaming money off of it. They don't even market what they're doing. Yeah, they are skilled, but sometimes they may also not what the next man is doing. And that again, that person may not be as talented. But then on the flip side, that person still might be getting publishing uh, from 
TV, film, or video games. That person is still putting out music on all streaming platforms. And next thing you know, they accumulate a catalog worth of material. Five, six, seven, eight years, a decade goes by. And they improved over the course of that time. They learned how to promote their albums. They learned all the important aspects of not only create music, but how to get it out there. And it's a beautiful journey when you see somebody go from nothing to something. Um, I, I won't necessarily say nothing, but even like I remember way before Kendrick became famous and he came out with that Section 80 album. That was probably one of my favorite albums that he dropped. But, on, you know, I say that to say I've spoken to people from the West Coast, from California, from L.A. They told me about Kendrick's climb, you know, how he went through the whole open mic thing at the end of the 2000s. And, you know, shortly after the 2000s, he started getting known. He signed a deal. And next thing you know, the rest is history. And who's to say that? somebody who's watching this at some point couldn't be that person now um me personally i can't say that i aspire to be i'm i'm you know getting a little bit up there in age i'll go as far as this music takes me and i've gotten placements as both an artist and a producer um in the gaming world so definitely not going to stop there my goal is to continue to get more placements because in the end, what I'd like to do is, that's really it. I'd like to get more and more placements, possibly like where I am right now. This is a home studio, but in the future, I'd like to open a a separate studio outside of my home to where I can do business and bring in and out of clients. I don't necessarily do that too much in here. Maybe if I know you, I might let you come in and record. But outside of that, I don't let too many people in here. But that's really what I aspire to be. Um, that's the kind of things. And I want to get involved in some other. I mean, I do have some other things that interest me. Um, I like basketball a lot. I'm into, you know, ironically, saying I got gaming placements. I've been loving to game for years. Um, and outside of that, I'm big into fitness, health and fitness. So that's something that you might see me get into at some point. But back to talking about talent versus work ethic i know dudes that are very talented but they may see somebody who has that work ethic and figure oh well you know you'll try to shit on them because somebody else has a audience that they've worked hard at building but someone with a work ethic doesn't have that audience so they're yeah i'm doping in this person but Who are you going to show it to? And I feel that you should, at the end of the day, of course, have both. You can go far, not necessarily being the most talented, but having a high work ethic versus being real talented and not having a high work ethic. And then on the flip side of that, I've known um, artists that they didn't have the work ethic. You know, they get this advance. They sign a record deal. They get this advance. And what a lot of people don't really take the time to understand is when you're getting these big advances, you have to pay that back at some point. And the way you may pay that back is off of the music that you make. Not only that, but touring, um, merchandise, uh, maybe television appearance, things along those lines. And if your grind isn't there, if you're just here to, you know, take pictures for IG, take pictures uh, showing people that you're working on something, but you never, ever come out with anything, you're just doing it for show. As to where somebody who is taking the time to really learn not only how to create the music, but they're learning how to get the music out there. They're learning how to promote it. They're not just coming up with one or two records every five or six months that they put on SoundCloud. I mean, you could find people's music on all these streaming platforms. Over that time, they're learning more about their craft, um, whether it's the audio engineering aspect of it, 
uh, if they make beats, they're learning, you know, they might learn a new type of sound that they want to achieve. They may also, one underrated thing that, and granted, we haven't been able to do this much given that there's been a pandemic, but there is all sorts of like networking events that people can attend inside of their cities that can go and you can network with other artists and producers, other industry executives, and even in some cases get feedback on the music that you're creating um, so that you can become better. But, you know, that, that again, that's going to be the big difference between someone who has a lot of talent versus someone who has a really good work ethic. Well, that was really kind of one of the things that I wanted to bring up because it's always a big question about does talent trump work ethic or vice versa. Now, again, at the end of the day, I think you should have a little bit of both, but I do think you can have a prosperous career doing this and... This ties in also to a previous video where I talk about making it. Like when we say the word, um, when someone may hear the saying, oh, well, hey, I'm going to pay this producer back when I make it. Or you may have a friend or a family member that's like, huh, you won't make it. Well, like, what does that actually mean? So making it, which ties into this video, making it is all about what you want to do when it comes to creating music and we got to get our opportunities wherever we can some of us that opportunity could be with a major artist making the next hit record for some of us that could be getting our music on film television right now we have the nba playoffs going on i know like usually right before playoff time a lot of people that are publishers are looking for music to put in ads to play in arenas uh to do this for all sorts of like nba playoff advertisements um in fact i knew like uh trauma from traumabeats.com who i interviewed years ago uh but he had several songs that were placed around um i want to say it's 2014 2015 that were picked up by the NBA and uh, in fact one night I think he was watching one of the games and he heard one of his songs being played while he was watching the game and then even like the other night um, I said this on the interview with Mr. Fat but the Cupid Shuffle again we're in 2021 the Cupid Shuffle came out in in uh, 2007 and the other night I'm sitting here Maybe three weeks ago, right before the playoffs started, because the Warriors were trying to get in. They didn't make the playoffs. But I say that to say that they were up big. I can't remember who they were playing. But Steph and Draymond were on the bench dancing to the Cupid Shuffle. Now, Mr. Fat and Cupid are making money off a record that came out, what, 14 years ago. Royalties from that song being played in the arena. So... Um, you never know where your opportunities are going to come from. It, some people may only make music for like film, television, and video games and never get a placement with a major artist. Does that mean that they didn't make it? And I mean, if that's the case, I would love to get residual income for a beat that I made that would get used over and over um, on television. So, I mean, don't ever let, just because somebody's more talented, don't ever let that stop you from pursuing what you want to pursue as far as being the best producer or even uh, the best artist that you can possibly be. If you're a talented individual that you might have put out a couple of songs on SoundCloud or Reverb Nation, but you don't really have any albums or any music on these major streaming platforms. Well, learn to research that. Um, you know, I talked about, I have videos here on this channel where I'm talking about music distribution. And then not only that, also learn that, see a lot of guys, there's something in there, whether it's they don't want to spend the money, they don't believe that their product is ready. Um, when I talk about them not wanting to spend the money is they're rapping over industry beats and have been for a long time. They don't want to take the money to actually pay a producer to 
for their beats. I mean, you got some of their, you, they don't want to take the time to, they don't want to take the money to pay a producer for their beats. I know producers that have instrumentals from like free for profit to like, I mean, starting at 10 bucks, 15 bucks, but it's the pride of, I don't have this beat exclusively. I don't want to record on it. And you got to realize that you have to start somewhere first. Instead of ripping a producer off for their beat on YouTube or um, downloading a free beat on BeatStars and putting that on a mixtape and never paying a producer for that. Some producers may have free downloads enabled to capture an email address to connect with somebody about beat sales and things along those lines. And you can't, you know, if you're talented, there has to be some sacrifice along the way to be able to get out there and get your music heard. You have to be able to want to invest in what you're doing. And then the second thing is, let's just say you decide I want to get some beats from your favorite producer or whatever. Then find yourself an audio engineer that can get your album sounding correct. And if not, learn about it. There's several books out there. The Art of Mixing is one of them. There's How to Get a Great Sound from Any Studio. Um, there's a book that I actually read here. Um, I like to dig back into it as well. And for the, the Art of Mixing, there's actually a video version of that on YouTube as well. And then, I mean, aside from that, I talked earlier about getting yourself a home studio setup. You know, there has to be some invest and there has to be some sacrifice somewhere. So, you know, it may not be the best setup, but I know still a lot of artists who they don't know a thing about audio engineering, but they at least have a setup at home for them to be able to record. There's no reason that you shouldn't be able to get a better work ethic to where you can start releasing your own projects and not making an excuse or not delaying yourself on releasing your music. I did want to say, hey, thanks to everybody, whether you're watching this here on YouTube or you're listening to this on a streaming platform. If you enjoyed this segment of the Major Music Lounge, please go ahead, hit the subscribe button. Also, if you're listening on any of these platforms, uh, Apple Music Podcast, Spotify Podcast, go ahead, leave me a review about the Major Music Lounge. It'll definitely help the podcast. And then also, uh, same, I appreciate everybody that's liked this, that's liked all the videos on YouTube and left a comment. When I get likes on the podcast videos, it does help YouTube recommend my podcast on the front page. Your likes are appreciated. Go ahead, follow me on Instagram at d dot underscore major music. Follow me on Twitter at d dot mme. And I appreciate you again, everybody that supported the Major Music Lounge. This is episode nineteen. We're gonna do. One more, I may slide some interviews in there because there are some people that I really wanted to interview that uh, their schedules and my schedules didn't align with each other. But if I got to get them in, I may give y'all some bonus episodes. So uh, we're going to stay tuned for that. And until next time, it's your boy D. Dot, and I'm out.